a, a deep a deep well of of want. Just to say, uh, uh, as a quick housekeeping, if you haven't muted your mic, please do. And uh, and if you have a question, if you put it into the chat box, uh, we will hopefully be able to get to it um, uh, towards towards the end. Um, um, so, uh, Paul, uh, uh, over the last number of years, well, first of all, he came to live in, in Leitrim, and then he is working in, 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 in Technical University of Dublin. And, and then uh, he developed, as he will talk to you about, um, this, uh, I, I, as happened to me, a love of, of, of McGarren's work and a love of McGarren land. And, and, and as he immersed himself, being a photographer, he explored the possibility of somehow um, bringing the two together, the words of McGarren and the photographic images that he was taking uh, of, um, of, of Leitrim and Roscommon and the wider hinterlands of, of McGarren land. So, uh, Paul, um, you are very welcome, and uh, it's over to you. Okay, good evening. Um, what I'm going to do is, uh, it's kind of slides, but I'll talk over the slides. So I'll be using uh, extracts from the book, which would be the easiest way of doing it. So at least there's something to look at. So I presume everybody can see the screen, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. I'll take it from there. Okay. Starting now. Do you want your images to make a statement or do you want your images to tell a story? This very insightful question was part of a review I had received from Lens Culture in relation to a series of images I had submitted for a competition. The remark struck a chord and it really got me thinking. I want to tell a story. Um, okay, here we go. As a child, I spent a lot of time alone, not by choice, I may add. I was denied an ordinary happy childhood and the need to continuously escape was essential. Hence the connection I feel with my image of the collie captured here in St. Anne's Park in Rohini, Dublin back in 1985. It was during my late teens that I started to develop a keen interest in photography. For this image, I, was, I had set up this image. It's down in an old folly overlooking one of the ponds at St. Anne's. I was about to press the camera release cable button and a beautiful collie stepped into the scene. The dog waited, then turned his head as if to set up his pose. I pressed the camera and captured a moment. As quietly as he entered the scene, the collie left. Personally, I love this image as I can easily relate to its solitude and in some sense to its loneliness. When I look with raw honesty at my early relationship with my mother, it was at times quite awful. I constantly walked on eggshells, forever waiting for an explosion. And that feeling of keeping the peace is always with you in some form or other. It makes you nervous and wary of people. You always try to please and to fill the silent gaps. This is emotionally draining and isolating because people pick up on the vibe. So you would draw into yourself. You feel different, maybe even inferior. You think you are a bad person, all because someone else's rage has been afflicted upon you. Even back in my early photographic days, I was drawn to the juxtaposition of decay and everyday life. There is a jarring contradiction of decay, ordinariness and happiness. Maybe it is a good reflection of how it felt at the time. The following words of wisdom attributed to the photographer David Bailey say a lot about my own approach and style. It takes a lot of imagination to be a good photographer. You need less imagination to be a painter because you can invent things. But in photography, everything is so ordinary, it takes a lot of looking before you learn to see the extraordinary. This was such a contrast to John McGahern's relationship with his mother. But then again, he only had his mother up to the age of 10. So his memories of her love and affection are frozen in a specific time. Throughout memoir, the close 
bond between John and his mother shines through. He had a very special, though short, relationship with her. Susan took John everywhere, and he loved to be by her side. Did the direction of his father's Frank McGarren's anger and resentment towards his children, including the jealousy of the bond that John shared with his mother, carve deep emotional wounds within the future writer? And what really got me interested in this project was that the violence against a young me and the violence against a young John McGarren left such an indelible mark. Did it drive McGarren to write? I know and I feel that it drives me to create and to try and satisfy that emptiness and want. I like to wander and explore on my own and I am very comfortable in my own skin. So in 1984, wow, nearly 40 years ago, I came to a crossroads. At the time, I was working in stores for a computer manufacturer. Would I sign up to an Irish Management Institute course and do a business course? I declined, and instead I signed, it up, I signed up with the National College of Art and Design and completed an introduction to black and white photography. So began my first steps to becoming immersed in my real passion. The American photographer Steve McCurry noted, my life is shaped by the urgent need to wander and observe, and my camera is my passport. In 1988, I headed on a one-year working visa to Australia. Whilst there, I took the plunge into the technical side of photography. I then spent the last three months traveling by bus up the east coast of Australia, across the middle and down the center, recording some incredible imagery. I love nature and the strong sense of the earth beneath my feet always gives me strength and confidence, though my head is inevitably in the clouds. In 1990, I was accepted as a mature student onto the technical photography course in what was then Kevin Street's DIT, part of the Dublin Institute of Technology. And my first introduction to John McGarren was while on holidays in Crete in 1990 friend had passed me a copy of Amongst Women. I was really drawn to McGarren's precise detail, especially the way he detailed the countryside, the customs of the people, the landscape and house interiors. His collected short stories became a well-toned book that followed me through the college and stayed with me in a particular way. In the 1990s, being a penniless mature student, I could certainly relate to some of the settings. It was during these very lean times of studying that McGarren's short stories became a very important part of my cultural awakening. The short stories sparked a deep curiosity to explore and observe the ordinary. Recently, I discovered images I had recorded back in the early 90s of an old rundown house in the Dublin Docklands area. It struck me as I reviewed the images how they could easily work with and become part of the scenes I have been recording for many years in Leitrim for my book. In the scene, Forgotten Bedroom, I really like that diffused light flooding through the neck curtains acts as a gateway to an alternate and possibly happier world. In the same house in an empty bedroom, resting on a dusty dressing cabinet, lay two old photographs my mind wandered. What was the relationship of the people in the photograph to this house? Were they former inhabitants? What was their previous life? What was their life story? I found this scene very powerful. The great British photojournalist Don McCullen argued that photography for me is not looking, it's feeling. If you can't feel what you're looking at, then you're never going to get others to feel anything when they look at your pictures. Moving with my family from Dublin to the townland of Farnet near Mohill in County Leitrim in 2001, it suddenly replaced me right at the heart of McGahern country. Little did I realize that over 10 years after photographing my first abandoned home in Dublin, I would start to explore abandoned homes in the northwest of Ireland and in greater detail. Unknowingly, I would start to meld my interest in the words of McGahan 
and my passion for imagery. This theme, the need to fly and create, of a small moth futilely seeking freedom through an old sash window, resonates with my desire to let ideas float. And yet the frustration that it can all be so near and so tangible and yet so inaccessible is constantly there. I wish to visualize a story, my own and that of the writer John McGarren, and to show how the two interconnect and intersect. There is also a larger part of my being that needs to share, to give back. I need to share this place known as Leitrim with those who are unaware of its magical qualities and at the same time offer an introduction to the writing of John McGarren. My first photographic exhibition related to this topic, entitled Still, it combined images from McGarren's short stories with landscapes and abandoned homestead interiors. Further exhibition, The Deep Well of Want, centered on the rich rain, excuse me, sorry, the rich vein of religious iconography I have captured in the old homesteads and my observations on ritual within McGahern's work. What I wanted with this book was to center on three main areas landscape, place, and ritual. The aim of this book is to provide a visual representation of McGahern's fiction and how it intersects with the autobiographical account of his life, memoir. I intend to bring his landscape to life and as such evoke for the viewer their own country lane or lost world, where they can lose themselves in their thoughts and memories, just as the writer did. Leitrim is infectious and seep into your bones. I write somewhat impartially as I am not originally from these parts, and yet the longer I live here, the more I realize that this is home and this is where I belong. It feels so right to be here with my feet in the soil and my head in the clouds, wandering through laneways and rejoicing in sweet, clean air. John McGarren came back to these parts after his years of wandering, call upon drawing him close to his roots. I can understand why. I have an emotional connection with the camera and the unique landscape of Leitrim, and the Northwest always draws me in. That deep feeling of clay and water and tall trees and the lonely misty bog. The following line from the opening of Memoir is an accurate description of the land. The soil in Leitrim is poor, in places no more than an inch deep. Underneath is daub, the blue-gray modeling clay or channel a compacted gravel. In the documentary, A Private World, McGarren said, now there was a lot of life here, but that it was local life, and that often the quality and spirit of the people varied enormously, even over the course of a few miles. One of the pleasant things about here is that they take you for what you are, you know, rather than who you think you are. And sometimes they'd ask me, is there much money in this writing business, John? And when I assured them that there wasn't, they seemed quite satisfied and to accept this like most trades. I truly believe that John McGahern's words and the landscape of Leitrim deserve nothing less than the type of reimagining of both that I have in mind. I'm an avid reader of McGarren's text, but I do not claim to be an expert. Therefore, my reading is one based on the hundreds of images I've collected of various scenes around where I live and the way in which they exemplify McGarren's evocation of landscape, ritual, and place. The emphasis is strongly on the image, as it is to be expected from someone of my visual background, and the ways I can, perhaps, illuminate elements of McGarren's aesthetic quest. During late spring and early summer, the hedgerows come alive and wildflowers take hold. Great big skies roll by and a large palette of greens dominate the landscape. The landscape of Leitrim flow from the pages of McGarren and I find it quite natural to visualize these scenes. The first lines of memoir emphasize the unique nature of the Leitrim landscape. The hedges are the glory of these small fields 
especially when the hawthorn foams into streams of blossom each May and June. The beautiful hedges coming into bloom, the vibrant greens through full, though full of rushes, and the moody sky really gives the theme timeless painterly quality. Leitrim is also known as the Wild Rose County, and that is a far more fitting description. It is the least populated county in all of Ireland. When out and about you stumble upon the scenes, no wonder McGarhan memories evoke the childhood in Leitrim rich in colour, drama and landscape. The beautiful and moody scene, rain clouds over Loch Eru, is perhaps a good example of my approach, as in it I offer my image, my vision, of what it is exactly that the writer is seeking to achieve. I now combine this image to the beautiful and eloquent words which are inscribed upon a memorial dedicated to the writer close to the barracks of Coote Hall, County Roscommon, the setting for his first novel, The Barracks. A white moon rested on the water. There was no wind. The stars in their places were clear and fixed. Who would want change since change will come without wanting? Who this night would not want to live? And within McGahern's work, you will find many references to the time spent on the water. The following passage from That They May Face the Rising Sun really adds drama to the moody black and white image of Loch Rin on a cold and foggy October morning. The morning was clear. There was no wind on the lake. There was also a great stillness. Place, the gate of Coromahan. The image, the little gate of Coromahan, is all that remains of the McGarhan home in the townland of Coromahan, near Aho William and County Leitrim. I use that image to illustrate my reasoning towards McGarhan and how his want evolved. Locked behind this gate, I believe that the writer's path was set. I feel that gates invite one to project, to consider their purpose. Is the function of a gate to hold back, to keep out, to welcome or to contain? The little gate of Coromahan symbolically traps powerful memories. The premature death of Susan McGarhan to cancer in June 1944 was to have a devastating effect on 10-year-old John. From this house, the McGarhan children and all their belongings were piled onto a truck and driven to the Garda Barracks at Coot Hall in Roscommon. The father's decision to leave the children's mother to succumb to breast cancer and to die alone in that empty house in this field at Coromahan was, I feel, cruel and cold. John McGarhan was now ripped from the safe cloak of his mother's love and cast into the cold and harsh world of his father. This deeply scarred him and from that day forth, the emotional part for the 10-year-old child to become a writer was set. Capturing a sense of place is a difficult and essential part of McGahern's literary undertaking. The following is an insightful definition from terrain.org of a sense of place. Either the intrinsic character of a place or the meaning people give to it, but more often a mixture of both. Some places are distinctive through their physical appearance, like Newgrange. Others are distinctive, but have value attached to them like the, the Cliffs of Moher. Less striking places have meaning and value attached to them because they are home. And it is argued that attachment to a place does increase with the distinctiveness of that place. The poet Seamus Heaney related to place as follows. It is this feeling, assenting, equitable marriage between the geographical country and the country of the mind. This would correspond to McGarren's treatment of place. It is one that is full of tenderness while demonstrating an awareness of how people can be molded in a negative way by their environment, depending on their experience of place. 
Kathleen Stewart in Ordinary Effects defines the ordinary as a drifting immersion that watches and waits for something to pop up. This is exactly what happens when I look through the lens. I observe the beautiful ordinary as it comes to life. John McGahan wrote about the everyday and his universe was Leitrim. In a way, his world could be anywhere while rooted in a specific place. The stories have a universal resonance. As he said, I think words are things and I think that each word has a color and a personality and that if you take out one or change one word, you change the whole sentence. What does it mean to experience a place? This question was put to architect Ashiwara Murari. You experience all places. Actually, it should be you experience all spaces. Your bedroom, living room, study, school, roads, alleys, everything. The general definition for the word place is a specific location. You would experience any place if you are present there physically. The difference is in observing it or observing what is happening in it. Photography is my way to express emotion. And as such, it connects seamlessly with the words of John McGarren. What I have sought to achieve with my exhibitions is to open a door to a world that is slowly fading before our eyes. One definition of nostalgia describes it as a wistful desire to return in thought or in fact to a former time in one's life, to one's home or homeland, or to one's family and friends, sentimental yearning for the happiness of a former place or time. I believe that the people of Leitrim are still very much connected to the land and its traditions. Whilst many have had to migrate for work, the people of Leitrim are worldly, deep and resilient. They have had to be. The landscape of Leitrim, either worked or barren, defines its people. It is a constant battle for the farming community to make a living on this poor soil, apart from forestry. Ruined houses, emigration and abandoned fields allude to a different era, but times have changed. McGahern, the storyteller, was an observant and technical writer. <laughs> Through his craft, you discover that many of his details came from memory. Within his mind, he meticulously built a scene before committing them to paper, <clears throat> as he related in the documentary, A Private World. I've never written anything unless certain rhythms or images stay in my head and will not go away. Sometimes they are three or four years there, Sometimes they are more than that. A passage from That They May Face the Rising Sun perfectly describes the popularity of the calendar in this image, which held a privileged position within the home. Within the deep walls on the lake, a butcher's calendar of the year before was always hung. Certain abandoned dwellings that I would revisit have now gone wiped clean from the landscape. Just like the scene here, the pink door, a beautiful old pink shop front. I had photographed this welcoming and characterful shop front in June 2013 in Strokestown, Roscommon. The shop front is now long gone. It's actually a chemist now, sadly. <clears throat> There are times when I must physically leave a space as it become quite overwhelming. I connect what I see in front of me. I connect with what I see in front of me because I feel as if I empathize with the soul of that building. Or maybe it is a strong form of self-reflection that causes the sensation to amplify. And then quite soon after leaving, there's usually a strong pull to go back inside and stay a little longer. To the question, does your house have a soul? Laurie Stone replies, you think they're just wooden structures? They're containers made to hold people and possessions. Houses don't have souls. At least that's how I felt when I drove by my old home at 10 years. That's when my heart broke. And just as an aside, last week I was heading over to Roscommon and I passed here and this house 
that looks onto a new development is gone now. It's been demolished. So another item disappeared from the landscape. And this image is on one of the um, Reimagining Ireland covers. So it is immortalized. If one were to further label my work, it could be looked upon as a form of social archaeology. With everyday objects allowing me to provide a viewer with a brief glimpse of a previous life. In relation to this scene, a dish scrubber, which was recorded back in 2016, it asked many questions of this well used dishwashing brush. This quote, which is attributed to American photographer Aaron Siskind, elaborates on my style of visual recording and expression. Photography is a way of feeling, of touching, of loving. What you have caught on film is captured forever. It remembers little things long after you have forgotten everything. Ritual. Growing up in Leitrim, McGarren looked upon religion and his mother as being somehow melded. She had a deep spirituality that impressed her son. Within this image, mother and child, recorded in the old kitchen of an abandoned house in Curra Row, Roscommon, there are lines from memoir that reinforce that closeness, evoking as it does the unshakable bond that McGarren shared with his mother. Heaven was in the sky. My mother spoke to me of heaven as concrete and with as much love as she named the wildflowers. For a young McGarren, religion formed an essential part of family life in the household. In some ways, the rituals could be a comfort, which was so important for its time. And McGarren directly re references the rosary beads in the barracks. The eternal medals and rosary beads were waiting on the spikes of the gate for whoever had lost them. The softer, more spiritual side of religion, McGarren associated with his mother and he was excited at the prospect of serving at the altar and this further link in the chain with his mother. However, there were also ceremonies conducted that are now quite archaic, as remembered by McGarren in memoir. As an altar boy in red and white with a lighted candle, I took part in many, many ceremonies of churching. In an article, the Art of Memory in the Work of John McGahern by Peter Declan Guy. McGahern's short stories combine historical facts and sociological observations with fictive elements and personal recollection, recollections, sorry, thus, produce, thus producing an alternative history of his epoch. The scene, crumbling frame of St. Anthony and Infant, blend with the following lines from memoir. I use this scene to illustrate, illustrate the innocence and absolute trust McGarren felt surrounded by. Between this hell and heaven, purgatory was placed. Descriptions of it were vague, probably because all of us expected to spend time there. Throughout his life, a raw emotion and a simmering resentment lingered towards his tyrannical father. The image discarded grave markers I used to visualize McGarren's view on the death of his father. When word of my father's death reached me, the intensity of the conflicting emotions, grief, loss, relief, took me unawares. Those words really connect with me. And that's why I feel a strong connection with John McGarren's writing. My own loss and hurt stem from a dysfunctional and somewhat violent childhood. That too was a big loss and it left me with a deep want. And now finally, I return to that significant moment in the life of a 10 year old McGarren. Quoting a passage from memoir, which portrays so much sadness and comfort, encapsulating the phenomenal trauma and loss McGarren suffered as a child came to say goodbye ma'am her eyes were fixed on my face she seemed to be very tired i bent to kiss her 
She did not move. I was bewildered. Both Maggie and the nurse turned away. Over time, I found it takes a deep courage to face up to the cold reality that you are broken. All you ever want to do is not to feel empty and to try and lose that feeling of a deep, insatiable hunger. A child or children of an unfulfilled parent will always suffer and carry that burden through life. So that's the end of the slides, but for the last few moments, minutes, I just ask you to sit back and I'm going to just run a small little image blend with sound, if you can hear it. Not getting this sound or
Okay. We're back. Oh. Thank you very okay. much. Wonderful. Um, and uh, yeah, just very powerful imagery combined with obviously the very powerful words of McGarren. And there is much uh, to be debated and discussed. And I would encourage people to put whatever comments or questions they might have for Paul uh, in the chat box. And um, I just want to begin by uh, going for me to to what is for me a, a major, you, you were, dare I say, bold enough to call this book a deep well of want because as we know in, in Irish history, when you say of somebody, there is a want in them, in him or her, it, it suggests that there's something lacking, that there is um, so maybe something unfulfilled, maybe even a flaw uh, in their character. And in a way, you suggest that what, that, uh, what links you and, and McGarren together is this uh, deep well of want, and that, uh, but that for McGarren, it was uh, um, not being able uh, to fulfill um, his love affair with his mother, who was perhaps uh, the love of his life. And for you, it is um, a, a, a love that you never had. You say at the end of the book that it was a broken relationship and that you said at the beginning of the video that you 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 lived your life walking on eggshells. Um, so it's 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 are you you're still convinced that this idea of a deep well of want uh, was the best uh, title for the book? Oh yeah, yeah, from day one. Uh, I think that the word want had been with me for a very very long time, even before this book, because it's kind of burnt into the subconscious. And it's funny since the book and even before it and not just with John McGahern like other stories have come up of other people be them a singer or songwriter and there had been a trauma in their life which seemed to propel them in a certain direction and as if uh, uh, their own want had been stamped upon them yeah I think as I say in the book as well um, John McGahern's I, I kind of he, his love was frozen at the age of 10 so unfortunately, I think anyway, personally, it seemed to color his relationships with women from there on in. Like, how can you compete with the love of a 10 year old that never got to carry on to see exactly his mother in her warts and all? So like it was just in some ways too perfect. And even when I went up to the grave at Aha Willem, where he's buried beside his mother, I don't know. That kind of leaves me a little bit uncomfortable. You're thinking like, what about your wife? And things like, like you know, it, it's kind of like, where exactly do you sit in things? Like, did you always run through life where other relationships were always slightly second best? I That's just how I feel. Like, it's not that, like, I know I came through my own life kind of broken to a certain degree, but I've always just felt like you have to go out and find your own thing and the apron strings have to be cut at some stage. So that's kind of where I would have come from to a certain degree. It's like even, I um, I read the book, I was given the book last Christmas there, a Bono, like a bit of hard work. And I know people either like him, love him or hate him, but he goes through the whole trauma he had with the day at his grandfather's funeral where his mother had a seizure, a stroke, and then she died from that. And just the effect it had on him. And there are other people when you start feeling about where it's, I suppose the mother, how strong a mother is in a relationship and I, if the, you know like it can go wrong with a father but if the mother's relationship goes wrong it seems to have a bigger effect yeah okay and and just to go back because you mentioned it at, in your talk and um kind of um almost unashamedly you said there was nostalgic and and and, and that in a way uh uh, I suppose some of your work could be seen as um, uh, an appeal or, 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 or a, a justification of nostalgia, which sometimes gets a bad press. But a lot of your your work is about um, you know, and going back to this well of want, but it is about uh, family homes uh, deserted, and that you you're, you're puzzling as to 
what this could have been about. Um, but in, in many respects, uh, you, you kind of eulogize, as McGarren does in, in, in They May Face the Rising Sun, about the lives that people lived in, in these homes, about the meaning they, they created, and that there is a nostalgia for that lost if you like, sense of home, which you you might not have had fulfilled in, in your own life. But at the same time, McGarren had an ability to write and capture the harshness of everyday life in those homes, particularly in the barracks, obviously in the dark, and 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 and, and to to reveal um like that all was not hunky dory. You know, don't go down nostalgia. And uh, you know, th th these are um, bitter more than sweet memories of, of these homes. Um, and, and do you think that would have been possible for you to have captured, uh, if you like, um, uh, that austere, harsh environment that it was the home of the barracks of the dark um, of, 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 and of many of the short stories? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It could be easy to do, but a lot of my photography is it's photographed in situ. Like you can set up shots to create a certain look you could to, to get, but I just wanted to go in and record as it was and what I found as it was. Because like when you were saying there about, you know, family and home and stuff, which is important and everybody needs those little velvet moments to fall back on because that's life. But like, the images I've recorded, they are bleak as well, and they are warm, they are nostalgic, but they are also quite bleak. Because if you were to say, for example, take one of the interiors nowadays and just put it straight beside in a, a kitchen nowadays from Ikea or whatever, and just have the two of them together, just a difference. But yet, they're both kitchens in their own way. Yeah, I'm. I, 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 let me ask you something because in your early work, I mean, you you photographed people, um, and 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 in in the book and in in the work here that we have in the barracks, uh, that's behind me. Um, there's there isn't images so much of people. There's one memorable image of Paddy McG uh, McManus Manus, yeah. uh, in 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 the Shah's garage. Um, but there, it, it, it is as if people don't live in these landscapes and these deserted houses. It's like as if it's a deserted village. I mean, and, and it, it's whereas people, if you like, predominate in, in, in McGahern's work. Um, and, and let me again, it, it's, when I was reading about your mother and that towards the end of, of uh, when you're in the, in the last, in the conclusion, and you talk about the trauma of you know, losing your brothers and your sister, and 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 how that is is part of you know, what drives you to continue to search for meaning in photographs. But in a way, I was I was I was looking for a picture of your mother. I mean, I was saying, oh, you know, it, it, this woman, and and so in McGarren we get a, a wonderful descriptions of Susan of his mother, etc. But we don't get I don't get any image of your mother. Is that deliberate? Um. I wouldn't say it's deliberate because uh, the book isn't about my mother in some ways. It was about McGahern. So, like, for me, I wouldn't have gone uh, down that avenue. Likewise, for photographing people in place, it wasn't for me. Like, I am. Uh, photographing people is not a problem to me. Portraiture, everything. I just wanted, because I was on a journey with these images, exploring, and I like solitude. So that's what I was looking for in most of these images. It wasn't the people, it was the place. Okay, and, and, and on that issue, I mean, it, um, one of the things that comes across that you capture is the, you know, the, um, as you say, the spirituality of the place. And, um, uh, and I've often wondered, if, because you, you say in the, in, in the ritual, you know, that, uh, that while he had time for Catholic rituals, he didn't have any time for the institutional church, but he saw that the, the rituals were deep and, 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 and fulfilling. But also in the countryside, there was an element of whereby um, that it, there was this, if, if there is a God, he doesn't talk about it, but if there is a God, it's represented in and through nature, whether it's, a, it, it's in nature or, or whether it's, it, it's through nature. 
but and that's what comes across in your work is is it this deep spirituality that links you and McGarren. That in 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 his work, it's it, you get it in lyrical descriptions. In your work, it predominates. It's as if you're saying to us, um, if you want to understand uh, nature and what it is to be in nature, okay, come and but come and live in 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 in, in Leitrim, because. <laughs> That is, they, this is where nature is not, is not as if, if you like, it, it's not wrapped up in cotton wool. It's raw. It, it's, 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 it, uh, and it has a, an, a, an energy, and a, it dominates in, in a way uh, that it doesn't obviously dominate in cities. Um, yeah, I think one of the first exhibitions when I held it back in Ballyroan, uh, there at the library in Dublin, we left phrases from a uh, they were printed on like leaves and on trees and they were all taken and we had a comments book set up just and it was mostly the comments were all people who lived in Dublin all their lives but are originally from the country and the exhibition really struck a chord with them because it brought them back in time a bit of a memory door so I know it's the whole country city argument but I don't know if, if this would have been as successful if I was a visitor not living in Leitrim. I think you have to be here and you have to be immersed in the everyday here to feel it. I feel very different since I've moved down here. Even when I go to work in Tala, I'm very different. And I love Tala. I love the fact that even though I'm from the north side originally, but I love working in Tala and I love living in Leitrim. Because when I go up to Dublin, I feel very disconnected to Dublin now because they're two different worlds. And living in Leitrim... I wouldn't have been able to produce these photographs if I think if I lived in Dublin. I have to be here to experience it. Yeah, and and and, and the, the the comments that are coming in on on on, on the chat box are are exactly um, um, you know, like resonating with that. You know, like these are stunning images, absolute sublime imagery, gorgeous visuals, incredibly moving, very evocative. These are all different people now uh, who are saying these. Um, and then your your work, is, and it's going back to what you were saying earlier, is therapeutic. Um, and uh, I, 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 again, it, it's you. You say in the book, um, you know, and I've, I've thought about this myself. To what extent is McGarren uh, an advertisement for living in Leitrim? Is 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 his work a a kind of a guide to how to live a good life? Um, um, and 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 oftentimes. Particularly, and they may face the rising sun, but there is this eulogy for the simplicity and the beauty of everyday life, um, and and you know that that in, in a way, uh, again, it kind of seems to me underlies, um, if you like, the frame that you bring uh, to uh, to to uh, to the interiors, the deserted houses, to the landscape. Um, I. I don't know. I think I. it's not so much I wouldn't put a lot of toss into the images. And it's not impulsive either. But I wouldn't plan the images. It just happens. I find personally, uh, be it in Leitrim, got into an abandoned house or the people, but particularly uh, the landscape and its place, it just, it's the feeling. And that's when I'll take my images. I mightn't take out for ages. I won't force myself to go out and do it. But it just happens. It just feels right. Um, and I think, apart from McGahern's writing, it's kind of, it's just a very simple message. Like, uh, I suppose home is where the heart is to a certain degree, but it doesn't matter. Everybody needs that little cocoon. And I think it seems to be with, with some of these images, maybe it brings back good memories for people or bad memories, but sure, that's just the way it goes. But it's just, I love going into old buildings even uh, I actually love going into people's houses if I'm in somebody's house and the first thing I'll do is I'll look around and see what's on the wall photographs and I think you can tell a lot by it from a house by if there's photographs in the house that people have taken themselves and they're not just all studio pictures because we all create these little nests and I love the little nests that are abandoned and finished and what's left in them because they really tell a story yeah, and, and and is it a process of um, you know kind of give or uh, toing and froing? What I mean by that is is that um, 
you know, in in the exhibition here in 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 uh, which comes from your MFA exhibition, but but that there is a, a definite juxtaposition of certain passages with certain images, and and um, and and I I wondered, you know, is it that the the you uh, the words are you go out and picture take a picture and then you look for words, or is it that the words send you out looking for an image, or is it a, a, a process of both? Um, some. Uh, some were retrofitted, but the majority would be because I didn't really start taking pictures for this. I had, say, McGarren short stories, uh, creatures, um, creatures of the earth, and the barracks and amongst women. They were the first books I really read, and it was just short stories. It was only I start remembering the stories, and then when I moved to Leitrim, I just suddenly thought, oh yeah, you know, it, it kind of clicked in big time, and that's when I start taking. When I start taking the images and the passages, um, it had started uh, first per chance, I think, a oh, good few years before I, I started on a research project. And I had made just a little slideshow of an abandoned house not far from here. And I showed it to Eamon and Brian Murphy at the time. And I just had a, it was just moving images of the house and what was in it to music. And I think myself and Eamon hadn't even, you know, uh, thought about this as an idea and we just felt like there was something was just growing there and that's how it started it was kind of the emotion of the house dictated what was taken and how it was produced mm -hmm. and i actually passed that house a few weeks ago and a couple from england have had it for the last few years and it's completely renovated it is very pretty now but it's kind of lost that little bit as well i feel so yeah. Sorry, go ahead yeah yeah, that's it, really. You know. Okay, and 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 and, and there's there's if you like three kind of main themes in 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 the photographs for me. One one is is of of obviously the landscapes, and and the second one then is deserted houses. And then there are their interiors. But then there is there there are these images which are very um, similar to my mind in in the Pat Collins documentary, which we have a, a extract here in the barracks of when he's talking about the importance of the image. He says it could start with something like a, 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 a simple, like a, at the time it's a, it's a water tap, and then there's an apple uh, in, in, in very similar in the window. And in, in three of your, uh, or four of your images, there's a butterfly in a window, and there is a, 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 um, an image of, of, of a razor, then there's also an image of a, 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 a dish scrubber. And, and in a way, it, it, they are, are un, unusual because they, they don't have the same, it, it would seem, a, a, evocative um, power of, of the, you know, the uh, abandoned interiors of the beauty of the landscapes. And yet they're powerful images. Do, well, they're you... like, they're like um, originally before I studied photography, I wanted to study film. And I couldn't, um, I didn't get in. And I was gutted at the time, but I studied photography. And some of my images, I feel they're like cutaways. If you watch a film, you'll always notice that the four or five seconds, it might cut to a cutaway. Okay. And it's usually to set up something in it, be a dripping tap or a door opening or something. And I always look at those images cutaways. But they're very powerful as well, because they're part of the everyday. They're simple mm -hmm. things that everybody sees a fly in a window but you don't really look at the fly in the window, but when you isolate it and actually look at it, it sets up a whole new world. So oh, yeah, Eamon, I don't think you, you haven't posted something, but I can see your hand up. Um, would you like to come in? Yeah, I just, just wanted to say, I suppose, um, Eamon, Eamon Wall, in his, in his wonderful um, preface, he says um, that the scholarship in this book is groundbreaking. And I'd like to echo that. I'd like to thank Paul for all he's done to bring McGahern to a new level in terms of a new way of reading McGahern, reading him through what is his credo. Remember that the image is his credo. That's where he puts out all put, puts down what his art is about. You know, the Medusa's mir mirror, um, something that can capture the intolerable and the beautiful. And Paul does that wonderfully well, as you say, um, Tom, by the personal investment that that deep well of want is something that both artists share, but it means it's not just it's not just your 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 want, Paul or John McGahern's want. It's, wow. it's it's the want that's in every one of us, and that's why yeah. we respond so positively to it. 
That's why we sort of we take a we take a breath when we see some of your images, and we don't want them to go away. We don't want your video to end. And I've benefited enormously from 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 your work, and I'd like to thank you for it, and to say what what what, what wonderful what a wonderful talent you have, and and the wonderful use you have put it to. So thank you. Uh, no problem whatsoever. Um, it's kind of unusual that the, the journey has gone this way because I would have taken an awful lot of single images all the time. And I would always have felt that my photography never made an emotional connection. And even growing up as a child, I would have been told as being cold and distant. But I always find that my photography for me was never a profession. And it's not something... For me, I've always felt I was given photography as a gift to give to everybody else. That's how I look on my photography, not as something I'm not a photographer. I just feel it's something that maybe goes back to medieval times, that I have something that I have to give to everybody else. And I can't feel uh, comfortable unless I give it to somebody else. It's just that's the way I find it personally. I think that's, the, that's the way all artists operate, isn't it? They, they, they just can't not do what they do. Um, <laughs> thank God. Uh, I, I think that that's uh, one of the things if you start on time and finish on time, but uh, that's a wonderful uh, way to end uh, what has been a really uh, insightful, stimulating and rewarding um, uh, uh, re-looking in a way at McGarren through photography. I, I, I want to thank you, Paul. I would sure, like to no also to thank uh, everybody else, particularly my colleague Martin, who uh, Morris, who has uh, who does the, the 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 work on this, but also thank you all for participating. I mean, uh, we're hanging in there. We're 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 trying to keep the barracks going, and we're trying to do these events, and uh, we do need your support. So attending this evening, participating in these events, uh, gives us the encouragement to go on and the belief that whatever we're doing is we're doing it right. But uh, I am very grateful to you all for participating. Well, obviously, again, to Paul for having uh, or, uh, done this webinar. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. And take care, everybody.